A subform is a great way to show calculations on a form. This database uses queries to aggregate and calculate data from multiple tables and show the results for each customer on a subform that is synchronized to the main form. Hi, this is Crystal. In the main form plus subform lesson, I overviewed the database that is being used to record customer payments. This time, we dive deeper into one of its subforms. This subform shows the sum of orders, the number of orders, the sum of payments, and the number of payments. While the balance could be calculated on the form, it is actually calculated in the underlying query. The name of this form is F sub underscore customer balance. The F in the beginning signifies this is a form. Sub means it is designed to be used as a subform. Underscore is used to separate the classification from the more descriptive part of the name, customer balance. If you double click, the form is launched. In other words, double clicking opens the form. The title bar shows the form name. If a caption is set, that would show instead. The property sheet shows that record selectors are set to no and scroll bars to neither. This saves space. Window properties such as control box, close button, and min max buttons won't apply when this form is a subform. When this form is opened from the navigation pane, it displays the first record it finds because there is nothing to direct it to do anything else. Without reference information, what we see doesn't make any sense. That is because this form was designed to be used as a subform. When you name the objects you create in Access, choose logical names. Also, think about uppercase and lowercase. Access does not generally make a distinction between case, but human eyes do. In this database, capital letters are used in the names of main forms and menus so an eye can see them faster. When a form is dragged from the navigation pane to the design view of another form, it becomes a subform. Access automatically sets the source object property to the name of the form that was placed. Source object is F sub underscore customer balance. If there is a relationship that Access can detect, it also fills the link master fields and link child fields properties. In this example, since the main form is unbound, there is no known data to link. The link master fields property, however, can refer to a control name that is unbound. That means that a subform could be linked to user specified information or information supplied by VBA. On the payments main form, here is the customer balance subform. The property sheet shows the source object is F sub underscore customer balance. To ease confusion, since this is a bound control, the name property is set to match. Customer ID is in both link master fields and link child fields because the same name is used for all field and control names that hold the customer ID. You can see that on this relationships diagram. A subform control is a container, like a bucket for a form or a report. Its properties specify what it contains, source object, how it is linked, link master fields, link child fields, what it is called, name, how big it is, width, height, where it is, top, left, what it looks like, border color, border style, special effect, whether or not it shows, visible, if the user can modify values, locked, and so on. Padding is the extra space around an object, so if you are trying to tighten space, you can set these to zero. 
In the form view, as you navigate from record to record, the information in the Customer Balances subform automatically changes to reflect the current customer. How is this linking done? When you look at the design view of F sub underscore customer balance, you can see that the customer ID key field is on the subform in a control, but the section it is in is not visible. Using black for the back color makes it obvious when one looks at the design view that the section doesn't show. Customer ID is what will be used to synchronize this form when it is a subform to the main form. The record source for this subform is a query called Queue Customer Balance with one record for each customer. On the main form, the Customer Combo box stores the customer ID and displays the customer name. Customer ID is the primary key in the customer's table and is an auto number. In related tables, customer ID is a foreign key, defined as a long integer with no default value. In the Query Builder for the Customer ID Combo box, you can see that there will be four columns. The first column contains the customer ID and will be hidden. Customer ID is also displayed in the last column. The first column that will show is the customer name. Then will come the sum of the order amounts. On the Format tab, column count is set to 4. The first column width is 0, so it is hidden. The column widths add up to 4 inches, so the list width is set to 4.2 inches to give allowance for a scroll bar also. In the form view, you see the three columns that show when the customer list is dropped. This control provides the value for link master fields, which is used to synchronize the subform. Now that we see how the information changes with the customer, let's examine the data below the form. The record source property is on the data tab of the property sheet. The property has the name of a query. It could also be a table name or an SQL statement. If the record source is blank, the form is unbound or not bound to any data. When you click in the record source property, to the right you see a drop down arrow and a builder button. Click on the builder button or press Ctrl F2. This query, QCustomerBalance, is based on two other queries QCustomerSumOrder and QCustomerSumPayment. Looking at the design view of Q Customer Sum Order, you can see this data is grouped by the customer ID and comes from the orders table. The calculated total for each order is summed by customer and called Sum Order. The number of orders, or count, is called Count Order, and the last date an order was placed is called Max Date Order. The data sheet view shows the four columns of information. Looking at the design view of Q Customer Sum Payment, you can see this data is also grouped by the customer ID. This data comes from two tables, Payments and Pay Groups. Payments are summed by customer and called Sum Payment. The number of payments is count payment and the last date a payment was made is called max date pay. The datasheet view shows the results of the calculations. Let's look again at the balance query. We see in the SQL statement that shorter aliases are used for the query names. Q customer sum order is called Q order and Q Customer Sum Payment is Q Payment. The design view graphically shows what the SQL statement says. The queries are linked on Customer ID. The arrow on the relationship line indicates that all records from orders will show even if there are not any payments. The fields that the subform will need are on the grid. The balance is calculated using 
sum order minus NZ open parenthesis sum payment comma zero close parenthesis. The data sheet view shows the results and also the calculated balance. In this lesson, you have seen how to use a subform that is synchronized to data on a main form to show calculations made by queries. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.